Hello and welcome to getting students to read and respond to your feedback. I'm your presenter today. I'm Dr. Amanda Smothers, the Teaching and Learning Coordinator in the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning here at NIU. Um, I've been in this role for about four and a half years now, and I've been teaching college English for the past 15 years. Um, so I definitely know about um, getting students to read and respond to my feedback. Um, if you want to introduce yourself in the text chat, just share your department or division, what your role is, are you an instructor, professor, TA, um, and what you hope to get out of the workshop. All right, so we have communication. And kinesiology and physical education. I'm hoping to learn more engagement strategies for students to take action based on feedback. We'll definitely talk about that today. And if you have anything to add, go ahead and post that to the chat. Um, also, I'd like to do this little check in with my own students, um, but uh, particularly when we're online and it's harder to see what you know their attitudes are for the day, their emotions that they're dealing with. Um, I have them share an emoji in the chat. So if you want to do that, you can click on the little emoji or emoticon icon. Thank you. Um, and, and share that, how you're doing today. And I am caffeinated today, which is good. <laughs> um, all right, so this workshop will discuss the disconnect or potential disconnect between instructor or faculty versus student priorities um, in regard to feedback. Um, we'll also explore strategies that you can implement in different teaching modalities um, online face-to-face, -face, hybrid blended. Um, and if you teach in a particular modality, um, let me know and I, we can kind of talk about how different approaches could um, be implemented in different modalities. Um, also consider strategies to strengthen your feedback and then we'll wrap up and there'll be opportunity for you to ask questions at the end, but you can also ask questions throughout. All right, so let's talk first about the disconnect. Um, faculty versus student priorities. So first, I just kind of want to gauge where or when you have noticed a disconnect between your expectations and students' expectations for feedback. And again, you can post the chat or you can unmute if you want to and share audio. Okay, so sometimes you're not sure if students even read or have read your feedback. Um, sometimes student revisions don't address or implement recommendations for improvement. I think those are very two very common issues. You know, are they even reading it first of all, um, and then you know they they turn in a revision, but it doesn't address any of the things that I've mentioned in my feedback. Um, all right, great. So. I think that um, we have some um, this equation here. So we've got, you know, however many classes we're teaching, we've got the, the hours that we spend lesson planning, we've got the hours that we spend teaching, the hours we spend grading, our office hours, hours spent emailing and communicating with students. So we have this kind of level of stress um, that can kind of bleed into our feedback as well to students. So 
you know, we give our students a, the feedback. It seems like they're not reading that feedback or applying that feedback to their work. Um, and then that leads to frustration on our end because we've, you know, got so many hours in the day and we've spent, you know, the time to give them that feedback. Um, and it just kind of feels like it's been wasted. Um, so that can lead to a lot of stress for us. Um, Lyndon Nilsson mentions that education is now kind of seeming like a game. Students quote unquote win when they're accruing the most points in the shortest amount of time. And that gamification nature of education can lead to student stress and a misplaced emphasis on grades or points instead of mastery of skills um, or meeting course objectives. So here are some of the components of this education as a game concept. So the good grades, they might haggle over points. They might be asking for a lot of extra credit, be asking for partial credit. Um, high GPA is related to that. So they're focused on maybe their transcript and having a high GPA, having you know the, the A's on their transcript, not necessarily on the skills that they're developing in the class that you know could lead to or be transferred to other classes or to future professions. So they're focused on the grades um, and that high GPA. The next milestone, so they're focused on the next class. They wanna pass this class to get to the next class. Um, graduation, you know, everything's just kind of um, a stepping stone to that final graduation or employment. They're not really concerned with what they're learning in the class, they just want to get the credential so that they can move on to the next thing, move on to employment. Um, and then the stress. So they need to get the quote unquote right grade in order to move forward. Um, and this will depend too on what course it is, um, what their major is, uh, what their future profession might be, whether they're planning on going to graduate school, for example, or going into the workforce. Do they need a specific grade to move forward? And so they might be focused on that. And that can lead to their stress. So one thing that we want to do um, is it explain to student why our feedback matters. That's an important first step in the process. Um, you know, give them some information about the link between feedback and performance. Um, share previous student responses to the feedback process, explain how feedback hones skills. Um, but within this, particularly those, the, the first two, linking between feedback and performance, and then sharing previous student responses to the feedback process, we want to show them. We don't just want to tell them. So just telling them, you know, applying this feedback is going to get you a better grade. Um, we can give them, you know, with student permission from a previous semester, Give them an example of a paper that applied feedback, show them the draft, show them the paper um, and that they revised, and then maybe one that didn't apply the instructor's feedback. Um, and then have them point out things that they notice between the versions um, and then share with them, okay, this got this grade, this got that grade. Um, what do you think about the link between applying my feedback and performance? So showing students how um, feedback matters and why feedback matters will be more impactful for them than just telling them that it does. Um, and again, sharing previous student responses to feedback processes too, that's another thing. I've, I've done this with um, my students in reflections. So having them reflect on you know, what did they do to revise their paper? How did they incorporate my feedback? Or did they incorporate my feedback? If they didn't, you know, what regrets do they have? Or what would they do differently next time? Um, how challenging them to look at how their incorporation of my feedback or not incorporating my feedback affected the outcomes of that assessment. And then also we need to establish our expectations. What are your expectations for students with feedback? Um, explain feedback expectations before they complete the assignment. Um, explain them early and explain them often. Tell students how they're going to receive feedback. Um, are they going to, and how often they're gonna receive feedback as well. Um, so, you know, are they going to receive written feedback on multiple drafts? 
Um, are they going to receive audio feedback? Um, are they only going to receive feedback on the final version that they submit to you? Um, which I wouldn't recommend, but um, you know, if that's what you have time for, then what are the expectations for what they're supposed to do with that feedback if they're not allowed to revise that assignment? Um, also, one way that you can incorporate feedback that's not just your feedback is peer feedback. So have students do peer workshopping or peer review um, and have them reflect on the feedback that they receive uh, from their peers. So what, what was the feedback? What are some questions that their peers had about their work? Um, and why will they or won't they incorporate that feedback into the revision? So one thing that I do with my students is I have them do peer workshopping on their essay drafts. They then reflect on what their peers said and they decide because this is their writing, they don't have to do what their peers tell them to do, but they decide what to incorporate and what not to incorporate. And then they explain why they are incorporating the things that they are, why they're not, the things that they're not. Um, also one, way to establish your expectations is to build the feedback and response into the project timeline. So make it a part of the schedule, do it in class, for example, um, and make that emphasize within the schedule of the project timeline. Give them, you know, specific guidelines, guideposts. Um, also consider a feedback journal. So this would be something that they would um, contribute to throughout the semester, for example, or throughout a project. Uh, process and every time they receive feedback from you from peers they would write in their journal about what that feedback was and that's a way that you can make sure that they're actually reading through that feedback um, and then you can add add that into um, you know their um, journals as well what did you actually do after the fact so what did you, what feedback did you get and then what did you do with that feedback um, also, you can integrate incorporating feedback into the grading rubric for an assessment. So emphasizing, you know, if, if our students are focused on grades, um, how can we get them to take, you know, incorporating that feedback seriously? And that might be incorporating it into the grading rubric. So they're going to be graded on whether they um, revise or implement your recommendations for improvement. Um, that's going to be one component of their grade. So that's showing them you know, if you're worried about grade, if that's what your um, expectation is, if that's what your focus is, then this is going to be important for you too. Um, and then keep reminding students of your expectations and the processes and the timeline for incorporating uh, that feedback into the revision um, and actually reading it and showing, demonstrating to you that they have read it and have incorporated it into their revision. So let's talk a little bit about stri uh, strategizing feedback. And I've touched a little bit on this, but we'll talk about some other strategies too. Um, but first, what are your current approaches to providing feedback to students? So when you provide feedback to students, what do you do? At what point do you provide that feedback? Um, again, you can post to the, the chat or you can unmute yourself. All right, so summary comments, comments in the margins of short analysis papers. And do they have um, an opportunity to revise those analysis papers? Okay, great.
Okay, same. Great. And what frustrations do you have? So you've kind of touched on this, not sure that they're interacting with the or applying your feedback, um, but what are some specific frustrations that you have with how students do or don't interact with and apply your feedback? If there's anything you want to add from your previous comments about just not even knowing if they're reading it or not addressing recommendations in the revisions. Yeah, don't like investing time giving detailed feedback and then feel like it isn't read or followed. That is definitely very frustrating. I've been there. Uh, a lot of students come back at the end of the semester asking if they can redo assignments based on feedback. Yes, definitely. Um, so they, they kind of get to the end of the semester, see that their grade isn't where they want it to be, and then they're concerned about redoing the assignments rather than doing them you know, throughout the semester or asking to redo them throughout the semester. Right, yeah, they're, they're just driven by that, that final grade, definitely. Um, and that would be something, you know, if you notice that's a pattern, that could be something that you address at the beginning of the semester. You know, if you're, if you are going to be driven by your final grade, you're going to need to be doing these things throughout the semester and revising throughout the semester um, rather than coming to me at the end. You know, so, you know, if there's a some I've toyed with and I've tried out having various um, final due dates for certain things. Um, so I'll accept late papers, late revisions that are revised based on my feedback. By this date after this date i'm not going to accept it so don't don't ask me um so that kind of helps give students some some guideposts there too um if that could work um so i haven't found a perfect the perfect thing to do but you know there yeah, there has to be a balance of giving students the opportunity to learn um through that revision process um and have their grade reflect what they know um, and what they've learned and whether they they're meeting the course outcomes, but also uh, not letting it get out of hand and you know increasing your workload at the end of the semester to something that's unmanageable. Um, so strategize your feedback approach um, measure the constructiveness of your comments and feedback um, and we'll talk about constructive feedback in just a second. Um, turn your feedback into an interactive activity. So is there something that you can do that's interactive with students that forces them basically to engage with your feedback? Um, and then this is something that you are already doing, but providing opportunities for revision and improvement um, and maybe guiding students towards, you know, getting those things done before the end of the semester. Um, by giving them sort of finite deadlines for, okay, if you want to submit a revision of this paper um, or this project, you have to do it by this date. Otherwise, I'm not going to accept late work after that. Um, and kind of getting them to, to work within a schedule um, if they're concerned about, you know, their final grade, for example. And keeping that final grade updated too. Sometimes, um, and I've I've been a student in these classes where you don't get graded on anything or you don't get your actual grade until the end of the semester. Um, and that can be very frustrating too and you don't know how you're doing on things. So um, making sure that you're keeping those grades updated and that it's timely too. Um, also using the 50 50 rule so kind of balancing comments balancing strengths with areas for improvement um, so what worked well and why 
uh, what are the individual strengths of the student in this assessment? What are some future opportunities to expand on that particular focus? Yeah, kind of like the sandwich feedback. Um, and then areas for improvement. What's an area for improvement? How does something need to improve? Um, suggest ways for a student to identify and improve similar target areas. Suggest a different approach for a future project. Um, so definitely like that sandwich feedback where you kind of sandwich the constructive criticism between um, some compliments. Um, be specific with the strengths. So when you're identifying what worked well, explain why you why you think it works well um, and how they can expand on that even further. Um, with areas for improvement, make sure that there's you're explaining how something needs to improve, not just that it needs improvement. Um, you know, if they knew how to do it correctly the first time, then they might have done it correctly the first time. So they might not know just telling them, hey, this needs improvement, but you know, how could they go about improving that as well? Um, and making things um, actionable within their, both the strengths and the areas for improvement. Um, I know it can be very disheartening for students if they only see negative feedback. Um, so they see the equivalent of, you know, a bunch of red marks on their page without any indication of what they're doing right. That can be frustrating and make them feel like they're not doing anything right. So definitely identify the things that they are doing well, uh, as well as the areas that they need to improve and focus the areas for improvement too. You don't need to comment on every single thing that needs improvement. What's the most important thing that they need to improve or the important, most important couple of things that they need to improve um, and work from there. And then maybe save other areas for improvement for later once they've mastered those, you know, two kind of glaring areas. Empowering students to revise is another good strategy. Um, and this is through constructive feedback, as I mentioned. So typical feedback might be unconstructive or might not be motivating to students. So this area is vague. I'm not sure what you mean here. Or this is a run on sentence. Use additional punctuation. You need a comma in one area and you also need to divide this into two separate sentences. Um, great point. You've thoughtfully analyzed the various aspects of this case study. So this might seem like typical feedback that you might give a student. Um, but think about whether the feedback is really constructive or whether maybe it's constructive feedback, but it's not motivating to students. Um, so they're not gonna be motivated to do something or to know what to do to improve it. Um, so incentivized feedback, on the other hand, provides some tips and suggestions. Um, for example, you need more outside resources to support your claim. How do you plan to build your credibility? So we're asking a question here. Um, I've identified one run on sentence. So if we identify a run on sentence and then we challenge our students, where else can you correct similar errors? Um, and with, you know, things like that, run on sentences, grammatical issues, um, one good way to give students feedback is to show them an example from their paper, show them how you might correct a similar example and then have them look for or identify other um, similar errors in their paper and then correct them. Um, and then another example of incentivized feedback, great job analyzing the complexity of this argument. In the next research assignment, please be sure to continue to document all of the opposing viewpoints. Um, so we've given them a compliment and then we've told them, you know, continue doing this specific thing on your next research assignment because this was really effective. Um, another strategy is to change our conferencing dynamics. So nudge students to guide the conversation in a one-on-one -on -one conference. Uh, describe some new things you learned. What stands out to you about this assignment? Tell me about the aha moments. Paint me a picture of your time management process for this project. How did you determine X, Y, and Z? What was unclear or difficult for you in this unit? And that's an important question to ask because um, if there's something that's unclear or difficult in that unit, then you can go ahead and, and fix it or make sure that, that they don't have that same difficulty in a future unit. Um, how would you approach this performance differently if you were to do it again? Um, so asking them to reflect on, you know, if you could do this all over again, how would you do it differently to be more successful? 
also create opportunities for improvement. So offering, for example, at least one revision opportunity, if not more revision opportunities. Um, if you don't offer re a revision opportunity, then ask students to reflect. So they could identify skills that they acquired prior to the assessment. They could identify new skills that they'll utilize moving forward. They could brainstorm skills that they could use in other areas. So that the transferable skills, um, you know, what skills did they develop through this assessment that they could then transfer to whatever their is important to them. So if what's important to them is, you know, the next class in the sequence um, and they're thinking ahead to that, you know, what skills will help you in that class? Or if they're thinking about their major, what skills will help you with your major that you've learned through this project? Um, what skills might help you in your future professor, profession? What can you transfer to that? So get them to think about the bigger picture. Um, so let's talk about some uh, additional strategies to strengthen our feedback. Um, but first, what's a great experience that you had with a student interacting with or applying your feedback? So did you have a good or a great experience with a student where you're like, yes, you did exactly what I want you, wanted you to do? Okay, great. So you've had students, thank you for providing detailed feedback. It's been evident to you that they took the feedback seriously in their revisions. It's always a good feeling that you feel like the time that you put in was well spent. All right, so one strategy um, is to postpone the grade. So ask students, for example, to write down a reflection of how they intend to incorporate your feedback into a revision. I do this with my students' um, self-assessments. So they before, um, I've done it differently. I've done it before they turn in their assignment. I've done it afterwards, um, but they write a reflection of how how they incorporated feedback into a revision, what they changed, um, how they engaged in peer review, for example. Um, and then also asking students to write down how they'll incorporate your feedback and their newly learned skills into their next assignment. Um, so this shows students that, you know, it's not just a one and done. They didn't just write this paper and now they can forget everything that they learned while they were writing that paper. They should grow on those skills um, and apply them to subsequent assessments as well. Um, also discuss the, the assessment. Um, one thing you could do is to either encourage or mandate individual conferences. So getting students to talk one on one with you, um, you can address specific things with the student. You can, if you're worried about students not uh, reading through your feedback, the individual conference can be where you have them read it to you or you go over it with them um, and then get them to talk about uh, what they could do with it in front of you with you one on one um, to improve their skills. Um, you could also provide a rubric and ask students to self grade. So these are the things that I'm looking for. Um, you know, assess yourself, grade yourself. How do you think you did um, on the rubric? Um, and then based on that, what could you do to improve? 
Um, and then also showing random samples of student work. Um, so give them an example of uh, a student essay, for example, from last semester or a few semesters ago um, with the, that student's permission. Grade, have them graded as individuals, then have them grade in small groups, and then compare their grades as a class, explain why they gave um, certain grades. And this is really effective at the beginning of a unit to show them you know, this is what other students have done and then have them assess that um, because I, I don't know about you, but when I started teaching, I grew my own skills. When you teach something or when you're assessing um, students work, you get a better picture of, you know, what you need to do as well. So that could be transferred to our students by giving them an opportunity to grade random samples of student work. Um, and explain the grades too, explain their assessments. All right, so I want to leave plenty of time for questions um, that you have about getting students to respond to feedback. If you've had any specific issues with students responding to feedback, um, you can pose those questions. Um, if there's anything, any gaps that you feel that I need to, to address in what I've presented, um, things that you've tried that have worked, that haven't worked, whatever you want to discuss right now. Okay, great. Thanks, Jen. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up the ungrading. Um, so you're experiment, experimenting with ungrading a little bit to try to get students more focused on learning than grades. Um, I'm doing this as well. Um, I have now this is my second semester doing um, labor-based and um, standards-based grading, sort of a combination of the two. So um, students either pass or they're not yet passing. And then if they're not yet passing, I give them feedback on what they could do to improve in order to get it to a pass. Um, so that focuses more on are you meeting the objectives of the assignment? You need to meet all of the objectives of the assignment in order to pass the assignment. If you don't meet the objectives, then you're, you have to go back and revise. Um, and that's combined with labor-based grading. So obviously we work at institutions where we're required to submit a final grade um, and you know, A, B, C, pluses and minuses, um, if that, that applies. Um, and so I came up with a labor-based grading structure as well so that you know they there's a minimum standard that they have to to do to get a c in the class if they want to be they have to do this extra work um, if they want an a they have to do you know this work on top of that work um, so the more effort they want to put into the class the better potential grade that they have but you know all of that work needs to also be a passing work so it has to earn a passing grade or they need to revise it until it does so yeah, that I mean, that's a way to get students and it takes them some time to get used to it. Um, so, you know, they're used to getting points or grades on things um, and to just see, okay, pass versus not yet passing. What does that mean? You know, what grade am I getting in this class? Well, we don't know yet um, until you show me how much work you're gonna do. Um, so it, you know, you have to be intentional about explaining to students that too at the beginning of the semester, that this is going to be different than what you may be used to, that this is the reason why I'm doing this, um, you know, and, and determining after you've done that, did it work the way that I wanted it to? Um, do students seem to be more engaged in their learning um, and in meeting the objectives of a, an assessment or a, a learning activity. 
um, versus just getting a, a grade in the class. What has been, thanks, yeah. What's been your experience so far? I mean, I know it's early, <laughs> um, but how, how are you experimenting with the ungrading and what's been the response so far? Or are you not in, in it enough? Oh, Yellow Dig is, is great, yeah, too. Um, students are more hands on than in some previous courses. Yeah, Yellow Dig is a great tool, um, you know, versus the traditional, you know, post and then respond to a certain number of peers. It kind of plays into students' motivations for that gamifying, which I mentioned at the beginning. Um, you know, so they need to be engaged and it's very stu student led discussion as well. So they need to to get in there and, and lead the discussion and move that along, which is great. All right, any other thoughts or questions or quandaries, problems that I can help with? Great. All right, well, if you don't have any questions, then um, we'll wrap up. And here's some information on connecting with, with CIDL. Um, we have a, a help website um, that gives you an opportunity to book with us online or on the phone. Um, and we have our upcoming programs page. So we've got a bunch of new programs this fall too. We have a couple of um, new inclusive teaching coordinators on our team and they're developing um, a great curriculum. So definitely check that out. They, they'll have a couple of new uh, workshops this month and they've got a couple of new workshops next month as well. Um, uh, September is currently available, um, but uh, October will be up soon. Um, and then our website, we've got a bunch of different resources. Um, I'll send out some resources too about uh, getting students to read and respond to feedback in my follow-up email. And I'll send also a link to this recording in case you need to come back to anything. But thanks so much for, for joining me today um, and reach out if you have any questions. Thanks.